In this lesson view, we're going to work with the toasts. And a toast is a great way for you to display a quick little pop-up message to let the user know that something has executed or to display some kind of notification. So to begin with, let's go ahead and switch over to the main activity.java file. And I'm going to write a method that's just going to go ahead and contain all of the information we need to execute the toast. So I'll space down the ending curly brace for our class. And let's go ahead and write some code in here. So I'll just go ahead and call this one display toast and we'll do private void display toast and I'm going to pass in here the ID of the record and the reason for that is because I'm going to need to determine what record was selected because I'm going to display toast information about that specific record itself and if you've read through the text on this particular lesson then you'll know that toast can be very simple and I'm adding some complexity to it because I want to display not just a string of text, but I want to display information specific to the item selected on our list view from the database. So let's go ahead and grab some information. I need to now use the cursor to get all of that data from the database. So I'm just going to say cursor, cursor equals my db dot. We're going to get row, and again, we're going to use the ID again. So I'm going to get row and I'm going to get that ID so that I know which record it is I'm working with. And let's again go ahead and make sure that there is a record there. We're going to go ahead and say cursor in the if statement dot move to first. And if that returns back a true, then I know that we've got record to work with. And I'll go ahead and open that curly brace and end the curly brace there when I hit enter. And in our if statement, Let's go ahead and create some variables. I'm going to create a long and I want another ID. This time it's going to be of the database. Uh, so I'm going to change that variable just a little bit not to confuse it with the ID up here. And we're going to set it equal to the cursor dot get long. And you can see here it's going to get the long of the index which is going to be that column number we had set up from the DB adapter. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this out and I want to pull it out of our row ID. So that's going to be from the DB adapter dot and then I'm going to have column row ID. And I'll go ahead and end that with a semicolon here. And if I switch back over to my DB adapter, you'll remember that I have that set up here at the very top. There it is, column row ID. I'll switch back over to the main activity. And let's go ahead and hit enter. This time let's go ahead and do string task. And it's going to end up equaling the cursor dot get string. And it's asking again the column index for the task. Task is going to be from the DB adapter again. Dot, this time it was column for the task. I'll go ahead and end that with a semicolon. And we're going to need one more string, and that's for the date. And that's going to go ahead and equal the cursor dot get string again. And the column index is going to end up being that variable db adapter dot column date or col date. And end that with a semicolon. Okay, so what I've really just done now was I'm going to be passing in the ID of the selected record. And based off of that information, I'm going to go ahead and then get all of the data from the database for that ID specifically, which is going to contain three different columns. It's going to contain that row ID column, the task column, and the date column. And I've decided to grab all three of those fields from the three different columns for that particular record. So the first one was a long, that's the column ID. And then the next two were strings, and that'll be the value of the task and the value of the date being passed in here from that column row. All right, now that I have that information, I'm going to create one more string. And this string is going to contain the entire message that I want displayed in the toast. Just to make it a little easier, I'll put it in a variable. And we'll call that one message. And I'm going to go ahead and say it's equal to, and I'm going to hard code in ID here with a colon, space, and then outside of here I'm going to concatenate all this other information that I have. 
So I've got first the ID DB. And then I'll go ahead and concatenate in. Now I'm going to do a line break here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hard code in a backslash N for a line break. And let's go ahead now and concatenate in hard coded word of task colon space. And then let's add in the task, which is going to be the variable task. And let me go ahead and maximize this. And then again, after the task, I'm going to go ahead and concatenate in there a line break again. So that way it returns to the next line. And we're going to go ahead and add in now the hard coded text of date colon space. I'll go ahead and concatenate in that date string. And we'll go ahead now and end that with a semicolon. Okay, so it's going to say ID and then give the ID. It's going to return to the next line. Then say task and then the string task. Return to the next line and then say date and then actually have the date that we are pulling out of the database. Now it's time to actually set up the toast itself. So to set up a toast, we just type in toast dot make text. And I'll go ahead and then delete all of the parameters out of here. And the first one I want, I'm just going to go ahead and say that the context is going to be from the main activity dot this comma. Then I'm going to go ahead and pass in the message, which is the text or string that I want to have, comma. And then the next parameter that I need to pass in here is the actual length of time. And uh, I can either use a toast dot length long or length short. And I'm going to go ahead and do a long toast. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then outside of here, I need to also put in the dot show method to actually show it and end it with a semicolon. Okay, so this is actually going to do the toast itself, and this is what I needed to set up the toast. Now I need to come outside of this if statement, which is opened up there and closed here, and I'm going to have to close that cursor. So let's go ahead and do cursor.close, and let's go ahead and end that statement. And I have everything written now for the display toast. You can see here I've got the yellow squiggly line underneath here and that's because I've never called to use it anywhere. So let's go ahead and call to use it after the user does a regular click on the item. Whenever they do an update, let's just call for that to be displayed as well. I'm just going to come after the populate list view and let's go ahead and call this. So I'll just go ahead and say display and we're going to go ahead and pick the display toast method that we just set up and I will be passing in the ID. Now the ID itself is being passed in right here on the long click item. So it's going to actually have the ID to be passed into our new method. I'll end that with a semicolon. And let's go ahead and execute this to see how well it will run. I'm going to go ahead and choose to run it. Save my changes. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this out. I'm going to go ahead and enter a new task. I'll just say finish. The lesson and we'll add this one in here and so now if I change it to lessons and come down here and click on it you'll see it changes it here in my database and populated it and then you'll see the ID the task and the date all displayed there on that long toast so this completes this lesson on creating a toast now in the next lesson we're gonna go ahead and talk about loops but then we're gonna also finish up the database and close out our connection to the database